are in his hand upon. Come, you blessed of my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Thank you for uh, celebrating Mass here at St. Judas again. Uh, once again, I encourage you to uh, participate in Mass by, by entering your responses in the comments section if you're on Facebook. Let us begin our celebration. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words. What I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us. To everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God and Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. year by year, with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that, by celebrating these present festivities, we may carry through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer, and a man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate, every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms, but Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked about, and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, 
they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise. Proclaim all his wonderful deeds. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem? who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? And they said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to the sentence of death and crucified him. <clears throat> But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses, and all the prophets, he had interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. 
as they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on further, but they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them, and it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were open, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the leaven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then, then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he had made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, y'all. The battery in my mic just went dead, so that's the bad news. The good news is there's a replacement. My question this morning, to begin my homily, when does Jesus come to inspire us? When does Jesus come to inspire you? Perhaps this is an important thing to take note of in our lives. When does Jesus come to us? When is it? Is it at an unexpected moment after waiting a while? Or is it in, in a grand moment when he hits us with lightning like St. Paul and knocks us off our horse? Yeah, I would very, I would very well say that most of the time Jesus comes to us in the very ordinariness of our lives and walks with us at that very moment. It's in those simple moments he comes to us in the very ordinariness of life. It seems that that's how most of the time Jesus works, certainly with me. When I was 17, I went through basic training in the army and I was uh, at Fort McClellan in the middle of the summer, and I remember that we were out on the Compass training range, and it was terribly hot at that moment, and uh, we were learning how to use the compass. But I think God, he came to me at that moment and gave me a different direction, you might say. He inspired me to enter the seminary. God just simply came to me right where I was at that moment and walked with me in that very ordinary moment. I would suggest that God does this with us, with all of us, in the ordinary moments of our lives, if we're open to it. He comes and he walks with us. He walks with us in the simplest of ways, like his little children. I would say he does that maybe most of the time when we're praying. When we're praying, perhaps while we're working or doing simple things, while we're, while we're just cleaning the house or washing the car or working in the garden, it's at these very moments that he just comes to us and walks with us in these very simple moments. I don't know, maybe he knows something that we don't. Maybe he knows that we're most open to him in these simple, ordinary moments of our lives. That's when perhaps he sees that he's gonna make the most impact on us. Look in the gospel today. This is what Jesus does. 
appear in the gospel on these two men in the very ordinariness of their lives, in their simple routine, on the road to Emmaus, Jesus comes to them and walks with them. That's why I say, I think Jesus comes to us most of the time in the ordinariness of our lives, and he opens our eyes. He opens our eyes to see the way he would see, what he wants us to see. I invite you today to pray. Not, not perhaps as you normally do, but within your daily routine. Pray as you work. Pray short prayers, uh, just from the, the bottom of your heart to God. Pray, pray perhaps while you're washing, washing the dishes, while you're mowing the lawn, while you're out there washing your car. Say short little prayers. I think you might be amazed at the results. Amen? Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us the salvation of mind and body through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy 
every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Gregory our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace wherever we are. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Once again, during this time of communion, I invite you to stretch out with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. Stretch out to our Lord Jesus Christ and ask him to come to you and give you a powerful spiritual communion. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, 
that the reverent reception of your sacrament of your Son may cleanse us of our old ways and transform us into a new creation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace wherever you are, glorifying the Lord by your life.